We're going now to the Good Party, who will today launch its manifesto in Santa Johannesburg. Uh, as you can see at the leg turn, the party leader, Patricia DeLille, is speaking. Let's listen in. And fundamental human rights. Lay the foundation for a democratic and open society in which government is based on the will of the people and every citizen is equally protected by law. Improve the quality of life of all citizens and feel free and free the potential of each person and build a united democratic South Africa to take its rightful place in the sovereign, as a sovereign state in the family of nations. So this is our guiding principle on which the party was found, the foundation. And we are committing to build a society based on social justice, economic justice, spatial justice, and environmental justice. Now today we will be launching a summary of the Good Manifesto for the local government elections 2021. And with real and pragmatic, achievable solutions to some of the many problems our municipalities face today, rather than a wish list of promises. That is not our manifesto. And to share with you also the names of the names of some of the good mayoral candidates in some of our towns and cities um, where that we have identified to participate. And also some of our mayoral candidates that were able to join us here in Johannesburg today. I want to say thank you to all of you for, for coming. So let me begin by sketching our road to the local government elections 2021. As you all know, Good is one of the youngest political parties. Um, but we are not new to public service. And also because we stand for resonate with people regardless of which old parties they have supported in the past. I have sought and fought to serve my country for nearly 50 years. It has been a journey that has taken me from being a trade unionist to an anti-apartheid struggle veteran uh, to being a member of parliament as uh, in the opposition benches and I'm very privileged to have served my country in many capacities. As you all know, I resigned my position as the mayor of Cape Town in 2018 on my own terms after winning four court cases. And after leaving, it became important for me to create um, a political home for good people who want to do good work to fix our country. They say if good people do nothing, that is when evil prosper. So we are now ready for the next phase of our contribution to fix what is broken and to develop a nation based on justice, dignity and compassion for all. Briefly on the Good Local Manifesto, you will see that our manifesto is written in plain, clear language that everyone can understand. Um, it's, it's, it's done like that deliberately because we believe that we can make a real difference and that the commitments that we are making for local government is achievable because they are also based on our experience in many municipalities. And a summary we will set out for you quickly on all municipalities that a good will participate in. Our, our manifesto is unashamedly pro-poor. Um, 
But the order we also our manifesto is not a, a, a comic book of revolutionary statements. It is reasonable and it's a, a, a achievable. Goodwill skew town and city resources towards servicing the needs of the people that have the greatest needs. We have to be biased towards the people that have been waiting very, very long and are still waiting. At the same time, we need to create better conditions for businesses, large and small, to feel comfortable so that they can create more jobs. It is a balance that we need to get right in our country. And that's the balance that can pivot us to safety from the cliffs of inequality and the depth of poverty. So the Good Manifesto accords the good founding policy to fix South Africa, and we must fix four areas, like I said before, of fundamental injustices. We will fix South Africa only when we deal with to achieve spatial justice, uh, social justice, economic justice, and environmental justice. Let me start with spatial justice. Spatial justice might sound technical, but it's actually quite simple. It amounts to breaking down the apartheid spatial plan. And we all know that people of color will put far away from cities. And an indictment to us in our new democracy today is that 27 years after our new democracy, people still live far away from work opportunities. So we need to make sure that we bring our communities closer to opportunity, but also to well-located areas. We see the sprawling uh, um, roll out of RDP houses across the country. But it's just taking our people further and further away from opportunities. So, there are many people living in informal settlements. And, and the numbers are rising because of urbanization, people are moving towards the city. And what we see is that the there's been a slowdown in housing delivery across the country. And it's often very far from where people work and where people live. So there are solutions. There are solutions to deal with the apartheid spatial planning. But we have to implement them. We've been talking about the solutions. Implementation is the key in all municipalities where good will be participating, uh, implementation is key to change the spatial injustices of the past. We have to deliver more housing, and we have to deliver more housing faster. But we also need solutions for families living on land in informal settlements. Many of the, the land in the informal settlements, it's, there, there's no spaces in between, it's not properly designed. So the solution that we offer is good, that we will take state-owned land and we will service the land and we will demarcate a proper township with proper access roads, where the ambulance can come in, where the fire engines can come in. And then we will then move people from those filthy conditions in the informal settlements to giving each person a service plot. And not only give the person a service plot with access to water, electricity and sanitation, but we will also give the person the title deed to that plot. Because if people have title to their land, they can even start building themselves instead of waiting for government. 
You know, I, I have read the book and I really admire advocate Tim Baker, Nuka, I, Itobi. And he says, our history is replete with examples of land settlements. They began as informal, but we were transformed by transforming by transferring rights and titles. And here we can think of how the city of Johannesburg was started with tents and a few buildings here, but today we have got this. Now, the role of government is also to ensure that it provides the same basic services to people living in informal settlements and people living that are not living in informal settlements. There's an imbalance whereby the people in the informal settlements are not always serviced. Um, and as I said, uh, the, our people spend 40% of their money today to travel to work because they are so far away from work opportunities. And that is why good will integrate public transport under one single transport entity. And that transport entity must be at local level to provide the buses, the trains, the taxis must all be under one, um, under, under one entity. But what we will also do, we will offer free off-peak transport to anyone. Uh, this will enable pensioners to have access to clinics and shops or even job seekers to have access to go for a job interview. We see that off-peak times, many of our transport system just run empty. They still run because they've got a timetable but there are no people. And what we are saying is that in an off-peak time, it should be free so that students can move around, elderly people can move around, and job seekers that are unemployed can go for job, job interviews. If I can turn to economic justice. Now, economic justice will just be a pipe dream. As long as corrupt officials and politicians are at their desk and municipalities. All the corrupt ones, we need to remove and put them in jail and not in an office of any municipality, including the politicians. Now, the only way to get rid of the corrupt politicians is to vote them out. They've been voted in so they need to be voted out. So when people complain about corruption and you continue to vote in the same corrupt politicians, you mustn't complain afterwards. There's an opportunity now to vote out the corrupt officials and politicians. Because it is the corrupt politicians that appoint the corrupt officials. So we from good are saying to the voters, Please lend us your vote so that we can vote them out. Because people must never give their vote away to any political party. Your vote is your power. You can use your vote to bring about change. And it's good we say to, to, to South Africans, just lend us your vote for five years. And if we don't do as we have promised to do, you vote us out in the next year. That is how democracy should work. We should not be saying that I normally vote this party, I normally vote that party, irrespective of whether they deliver to you or not. So, what we are saying is the good government will bring, uh, will drive a new deal, which will linking services, jobs, and infrastructure development. So we will invest 
and infrastructure to create jobs. And investing in infrastructure also includes that we need to do maintenance and repairs on all the old existing infrastructure. Because all infrastructure has got a lifespan of 30, 35 years. And we find that most of our infrastructure is not being maintained, it's not being repaired, especially in most of the municipalities. Even though the municipalities receive the grants to do repairs and maintenance, but they don't because they use that money for other things. So in addition, we will then also support SMMEs and also we will look at proper premises for the informal traders where they've got ablution facilities. You see today our informal traders, how they stand in the streets with no, no facilities. Then um, when it comes to tenders, again, we will open the whole tender process to the public. And I've done this in the city of Cape Town, where the public can come and sit and look at where you've got the tender evaluation stage, you've got the tender adjudication stage, and to an extent where the tender is awarded to a successful bidder. We will then put that tender, once awarded on the website of the municipality, but we will also take a copy of that tender to the community that's going to benefit from that service. So that the community can be our eyes and ears. That the community must know who's the contractor coming in there. We must ensure that all the co contractors abide by the 30% preferential procurement. But you need more transparency in the standard system. That is where all the corruption is taking place. And that is what we are prepared to do. Also on economic justice, we want to change the budgeting process. Um, because a municipality is spending your money. It's your money that you pay for rates and taxes. And therefore you must have a say on how that money is spent. So the current situation is that the municipalities will go to the community with an already worked out budget, fait accompli. We say no, we need to consult the community to say, this is the amount of money in the budget. Let us agree together what are the priorities that the community want the money to be spent on. So we want to have a people's budgeting process that is more uh, participatory. Lastly, let me go to social justice. Now, but social justice and then environmental justice, then I'm done. Now, when we talk about social justice, it's a good policy, but it's also very broad. But just like everything else, it is about beginning with community safety and having safer communities. We know our communities are living under siege. Now what we see, what is wrong uh, with the, the current way we deal uh, with, with crime, police are called after the crimes are committed. We say that as local government, we must take more responsibility and, re and create conditions to address the root causes of crime and the antisocial behavior. So what we will do to reduce crime, because we need to stop crime before it happens, and therefore, that, therefore, that means that we have to fight poverty, we have to fight unemployment, we have to fight the anger, we have to fight drugs and gangsterism. We have to fight to make our neighborhoods safe. 
So, employing more social workers in our communities, to be at our schools and all over. We need more social workers, we need more drug counselors, and more community amenities providing um, alternative pathways to crime. We have lo looked at the Colombian model, and we will not go into detail now, but what we've seen in Col Colombia is that they were able to cut serious crime by 80%. And, and that is a good plan that we will adopt to make our towns and cities safe. So I won't go into more detail there because we will be releasing the detail later. On environmental justice, there are a lot of greenies today and I agree. Um, environmental justice pertain to green and brown issues. And it is achieved by putting us firmly on a trajectory for a net zero carbon emissions by 2030. That is the commitment that we made as a country when we signed the Paris Agreement. Because so many people live and lead consumptive lives in urban areas, Cities can play a disproportionate role in reducing climate change. We must embed green thinking in all municipal service, from the management of alien infested water courses, management of water, the installation of solar green. So basically what they're saying is good. You cannot take a decision in any municipality today without overlaying that decision with the impact of climate change. It is our people who are exposed to droughts and floods. We've seen them disproportionately in the past few years. And then, again, we must, the aging infrastructure, especially with water, water is going to become the next wars in our country and around the world. We have to, well, uh, repair and maintain and replace that old infrastructure. Um, good people, regardless of where they live and how, how, how much money they have, deserve clean, green, healthy neighborhoods with functional stormwater system, clean water, safer electricity, regular rubbish removal and safe uh, um, and safe parkways now fixing municipalities is no small task and we all know that the waste is staggering in our country during the 2016-17 and 2018 uh, um, AG report um, they showed that, for instance, Nelson Mandela Bay lost 700 million, Johannesburg lost 1.5 billion, Chuane lost 3.6 billion, the city of Cape Town lost 1 billion. So if we can stop this waste, we can certainly put that money back into services. Now, just to end off, you know, good was just three months when we participated in the 2019 elections um, and we attracted about 70,000 votes resulting in two members of parliament and one in the legislature. The last year, the whole of 2020, we started testing our systems in preparation for local government 2021. And we started participating in by-elections across the country because we've seen a shifting of votes. The voting pattern is beginning to shift. So we also put our head into the ring. And now we've seen substantial growth and we were also able to win in one of the by-elections in George, we won our first ward as the good party. So, So I, I can assure you that we have tested our system, we've run it for the past year and a half, we have trained our, our canvases, we've trained 
Oh, the whole teams working with um, with local government, and I'm quite confident that we will put up a good show uh, come the first of November. So we we plan to increase our our presence now across five provinces, um, 45 municipalities, six metros, and about 1,000 wards. Um, we submitted our candidate list on time and on, uh, with the IEC, and it's all systems go for us for the 1st of November, member. Now, a few weeks ago, we announced Brett Heron as the mayoral candidate for the city of Cape Town. Uh, uh, Brett is very experienced in local government. Um, he served with me for eight years, but before that, he spent another four years. So I'm very confident that um, that bread will help us. When we left the city of Cape Town, we had a lot of unfinished business. Mm -hmm. So we're going back to finish the business there. Then the question about coalitions lastly. Um, now none of us can predict the outcome of the elections because this is a time of great flux in our country. I just listen to all the polls that they've done in AUKUS and people think anything can change. Um, once you see political parties up their game and their campaigns, we can certainly see a reawakening of our, our, our democracy. Um, but the voters must speak. And if there's a need for coalitions after the elections, we will evaluate the possibility of coalitions on a case-by-case -case basis and on merit and with proper regard for the wishes of the people that have voted us in. We have seen currently in our country, there are many uh, coalitions taking place, especially at local government. You see, for instance, in, um, uh, in Bito municipality in, in the Western Cape, currently you've got the DA and the ANC in a coalition there. Um, you see in Citrus Dow and many other places across the country, where there are coalitions uh, between many, many parties in our country. Just in conclusion, I want to guess, one other silly question that people always ask me <laughs> that I must deal with. And that is that I don't work for the ANC. I don't work for President Cyril Ramaphosa. It is important to distinguish between being a constructive opposition politician without discarding your principles. That's key. We have seen in the past, in fact, in all the, 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 the six terms uh, of our democracy, where the ruling party has brought in the Freedom Front, the National Freedom Fund, and may your soul rest in peace for dear sister who passed on. You've seen Azapu. You've seen many other parties being part of cabinet. But that didn't turn them into ANC. They are still there. So that's why I say it's a silly question that I just want to dispose of now. So I'm now going to give over, I know time is time for all of us, I'm going to give over to our chairperson, Sam, um, just to, to read to you um, some of the mayoral candidates that are here today that were able to make it to Johannesburg and that have joined us here for the launch of our, our manifesto. Chairperson, over to you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um all right, the Good Party launching its uh, elections manifesto, briefly, briefly giving a, a summary of what it uh, contains. Uh, Patricia 
Dalil there talking to us, uh, saying that it's one of the youngest political parties uh, and basically starting off and giving us a sense of where she's come from, uh, fighting to serve this country for about 50 years, she says, uh, also creating, saying that this, this, this party was created for good people to do good things uh, and they're ready to for the next phase in this party ready to fix things that are broken um, and also going on to saying that um, in terms of small uh, in terms of business in general large or small uh, they want to create better conditions in order to increase employment um, implement uh, implementation is key in order to change the spatial injustices of the past she says and also towards the end saying that in terms of coalition uh, if there's a need for a coalition, they said after the elections, they will assess it, they will evaluate it and take it on a case-by-case -case basis and on merit.